As performers, we rely on audience interaction. Today we're gonna to talk to an artist who has turned to Twitch to try to regain some of that. We're gonna to talk to her about that and much more, so stick around. Welcome to Charlie's Open Mic. My name is Charlie Mossbrook. On today's show, we have Laura Joy. She is a singer-songwriter out of Arizona. She's been building a concert series in that area that allows audiences to come together and enjoy live music while being safely distanced. She's also been working on a lot of online content, including using the uh, platform of Twitch, which allows her more interactive uh, opportunities with her audiences. We're going to talk to her about that and much more, but first we're going to listen to her. Sun goes down, ocean is black Just a few hours till the sun comes back Traveling time, hope in our hearts Wonder in the sky, the stars make art With constellations in constellations Who's out there in the ancient glow? Messages from a thousand years ago. Did they see Jesus? See the fall of Rome? Take photos of dinosaurs like years from home in the constellations and constellations. The minds looked up and saw the truth. Galileo, he wanted proof. Cosmic dancers in our home backyards looking for answers. We are children, we're children of the stars. We're children of the stars, yeah. Blessing and a curse to try and know our place in the whole universe. Spending our time, hope in our hearts, scanning the sky, playing our part in the constellations and constellations. The minds looked up inside the truth. Galileo, he wanted proof. Cosmic. show laura hey thanks for having me charlie you bet it's it's good to see you. i haven't seen you in quite some time yeah it's been years it's, it feels like years it's been about um, two years yeah i think one of the last local concerts i did actually was a house concert at the place you and i did a house concert which oh. i think is the last time i saw you yeah yeah that was it that was the place Peach and uh and elizabeth's house yeah and they're good That'd people good supporters of our music around town now and that was the first so time nice. i did it Oh, it was us. We were the first ones. Yeah, now they're doing. Oh, it went so smoothly. I didn't. I didn't really know. Yeah. Well, they, they've done a few house concerts up until January, and after March, they decided not to do them anymore because. Um, yeah. Because that's gotten weird. Yeah. You are from Arizona. 
you moved to New York, you moved to Chicago, you probably moved a bunch of other places in between, and you're back in Arizona now. I am. When did you leave Chicago? I left Chicago in uh, August of 2018. Your family's from Arizona, so I'm assuming that there's... Yeah, my dad was living here until last year, and he moved in with my sister in Albuquerque. So um, as far as family goes, uh, blood relations, there are no more here, but I have so many like friends who are like family that mm -hmm. it's it's still really great. So I feel very connected with the community and, and people who have been in my life for a very long time. Honestly, like the city of Phoenix has been extremely supportive of, you know, small entrepreneurs like myself, and I've just... Um, really, even during the pandemic with some grants and stuff I've gotten to help me through this, it's been really great. So I'm assuming you're not doing many gigs in front of human beings these days. No, um, but I just did one in a place called Carefree, Arizona, which is a little bit north of Phoenix, and mm -hmm. they have a pavilion space. And um, I'm actually helping to book and organize the series. It is just an outdoor space and we just put out cones every 10 feet and two people get a cone keep your mask on and the last well the first two um went really well mm -hmm. so we have it booked out through october 31st and um the sad thing is like we don't want it to be too successful because that's when <laughs> that's when it'll be closed down it's very right. weird it's very weird but I'm not really like promoting it a whole lot <laughs> Because you can really, yeah. Only kind of thing. yeah, um, you can only have 50 people in the pavilion when it usually has 150 people, but it's free. You just got to set up your chair by a cone and keep your mask on. And it was just perfect. And the weather here starts to get nice. Everyone's been having their outdoor gigs during the summer and we couldn't even go out. So now it's our time. So hopefully it'll, it'll just, um, it'll keep working out because it was really great and the community really appreciates it. Down in Arizona, you've got an advantage over us. We've, you know, we've had some outdoor shows around here. A lot of people are playing the wineries where there's a lot of space to spread out. And um, I did a, a backyard concert a couple of weeks ago, and that kind of outdoor opportunity is going to end very quickly. Um, as a matter of fact, we're starting to hit the 50s at night now. And um, that, whereas you might get cool in the evening in the in the desert. Your it day is still going to heat up significantly. It is still 104 today. In fact, mm -hmm. it is unseasonably warm still. We're probably about five degrees hotter than we should be right now. Mm -hmm. But um, Carefree is north of the city, so it's more in the desert, which means there's less of a concrete heat sink. So it actually gets um, into the 60s now in uh, Carefree. So in the, in the evening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once once the sun goes down, it's it's really lovely. So. Um, it's perfect, really. I've performed gigs in Phoenix, even in like, I did a Christmas gig outside. I mean, it was cold, it was like mm, 50, but mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it's doable as long as it's not um, like really long. Cause then even like at 50 degrees, my fingers get kind of cold after a while. So yeah, and, there's limits. And being able to feel your fingers is really important. And with that, I wanna get into your particular style of um, guitar you are a finger picker and at times very percussive yes um, how did you develop that um i took classical primarily and then just sort of went from there it's what i've always loved i just love watching other when anyone uses the guitar as a percussive as well as a you know strum it's really mm -hmm. cool i think it's maximizing what you can get out of the instrument especially if you're a solo musician it just helps to have that stuff mm-hmm and it's more fun too. It just adds different colors and textures. I notice leaning against your stove is a Laravee, and that's the same guitar you've had for a few years now. Yeah, I've had that about seven years. Yeah. You're digging it. Ah, yeah, I love it. I love it. Actually, I'm ready to upgrade. Shh, don't tell her. Don't tell her. Are you going to stay with a Canadian? Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to get fancy, fancy. You know, when I make all the money after after the pandemic, it'll be a, a post-pandemic guitar. <laughs> I spent the pandemic doing a lot of um, attempting to restructure my career as a musician. Mm -hmm. And it's been much more time consuming than I would have thought it'd be um, in terms of learning sound equipment, getting the right stuff, setting it up, 
um, testing different platforms, having one work and then have it go weird like Facebook did. Mm -hmm. um, finding out like, you know, who's on what and when to schedule. It's just like pretty much nonstop um, testing mm -hmm. and sort of scheduling and getting used to it. So um, that's what I've been doing since April, basically, is just learning how to do Twitch, learning how to do Facebook Live, learning how to do videos from my phone, like all this stuff like I never used to do. Which platform do you prefer? It comes down to, um, at this point, wanting a realistic sort of monetization option. And mm -hmm. while I like the fact that most of my active fans are on Facebook, um, there is no way to monetize that beyond tips. Whereas if I have subscriptions on YouTube or subscriptions on Twitch, I can actually be building passive income from these people who aren't tipping. You know, mm -hmm. if just to subscribe is all it takes and I get a, you know, a few cents. So uh, that's what I'm focusing on now. So I'm just starting to get my YouTube reformatted. They have a whole new artist page thing you have to set up and um, learning the new analytics. They have whole new music analytics for artists in particular. So it's just like probably another like three to four hours of me learning how to do that stuff. I just found out about it two days ago. So <laughs> yeah, so that's the next transition. Like I said, it's all like just constantly changing. You're, you are a, an award-winning songwriter. An award-winning. <laughs> this is true, is it not? So many awards. Yeah, I've, I've won a few awards. Have you done much songwriting during the, during the pandemic? I have. I had kind of a block for a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Didn't start flowing until mid-May, but now I've got like a bunch of stuff going and the songs that are coming out are definitely different than they have been. I even managed to do my first co-write with a friend. Um, so that was fun and we did that just through sending each other videos and thoughts on email. And then... Uh, the first co-write ever? Yeah. Yeah, officially. No, no. I mean, there was a Christmas song that I did with my friend Annika. Mm -hmm. um, that was the first one ever. And that one um, is also really great. But we did it a little differently because Annika just provided um, lyrics. No, I guess we did it pretty much the same. And I did the music. and But I didn't have to kind of play with Annika's lyrics so much. She sort of already had a rhythm. Mm -hmm. And um, I definitely played around with Eric's stuff quite a bit. So with her music, you built the built the music behind it based on the rhythm that was present in the mm -hmm. lyrics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but with Eric's, I had more of like a complex melody in mind, so I had to shift some things around, and he was fine with that. And then we would sort of like reconvene and um, talk about which words he liked, and just sort of find a place that was good for both of us. Have you have you developed any new processes during the pandemic? Because your lifestyle's changed. I mean, you're at home all the time. Whereas yeah. you really are uh, an active uh, touring musician. You, you perform mm -hmm. a lot all over the place. I have a very noisy bird outside my window. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you're an active touring musician. Now you're at home all the time. Uh, so has the process of both practice and songwriting changed for you? Well, actually, what has happened is I've been learning a lot of covers and that has sort of maybe changed how I structure my songs or the way I think about things because I have ideas of like what I like that other people have done. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of um, maybe mixing in a little bit more than it used to. So um, my songs are turning into a little bit more pop, which is unexpected, but it's still like super singer songwriter indie stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's fun to like have kind of a different style. So you're not always writing, you know, the same flavor. I'm actually really happy about that, but it wouldn't have happened if I hadn't had to learn like a ton of covers, um, because it's really like in the learning of those songs that it really incorporates in my brain. Now, did you have to learn those covers out of necessity or was that more? Yeah, pretty much. I'm doing, yeah, I'm doing Twitch. Um, and Twitch is an all requests sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So I only had like 60 songs. Now I've got about 75 to 100. I don't know. Um, and I'm still like mastering. I'm a little bit kind of a like perfectionist with um, how I do covers. So I want them to be 
really good. And I would say each cover kind of requires like 10 to 12 hours of work so it's it's intense what I'm doing and ideally if you're broadcasting like two hours a day for three times a week you really should have about 200 covers for people to choose from just to keep it sort of mixed up um, so I've got quite a ways to go and what do you know probably plenty of time so I've not used twitch at all um so you would supply the list of songs that people yeah can... they've got an interactive widget that lets you put in all of your songs and then people can request it and it'll pop up on your screen and you just do the song yeah mm -hmm. it's something that i would honestly really like to have available when i'm doing bar gigs because to have people be able to choose what they want to hear is fine i only play what i want to play so um, you're not going to pick something i don't like and right. if you want to hear it that's fine. I think that's easier than I don't have to like um, come up with set lists and try to figure out what that that guy in the corner, you know, would enjoy most. Twitch is cool like that, and I hope I can kind of incorporate it into into real life, maybe with like an app or something. I don't know. This is all coming out of my mouth now. I get excited when I have new ideas because I'm so bored. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> If you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Please ring the bell for notifications of upcoming episodes. Uh, please visit us at charliesopenmic.com where you can find our Patreon page and help support the show. Listen to a woman and listen to her words I bet she knows herself much better than you do and listen to a woman and keep an open heart and maybe you'll learn a thing or two and don't rush to judgment don't be unkind don't think it a fluke when she speaks her mind and listen to a woman once in a while I know when I do it makes her smile There are some things that I can't comprehend And what's good for me isn't always best for you From where we stand we both have a different views Like you love me I love you So listen to a woman And listen to her words I bet she knows herself Much better than you do But listen to a woman And keep an open heart And maybe you'll learn a thing or two She might be my mother my sister or my wife Or maybe I miss her from early in my life So don't disrespect her Cause she means the earth to me And listen to a woman And listen to her needs Thank you for watching Charlie's Open Mic this week, and thank you to Laura Joy for sitting down and talking to me and sharing a little music with us. As always, please hit that subscription link down below. Please ring the bell for notifications. Always comment down below and hit like if you like the episode. Uh, you can visit us at charliesopenmic.com and find our Patreon page to help support the show. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs>